which is better than the other? Well, in terms of return on investment, inbound marketing has much better returns because they're already ready to buy. They're already ready to hire you for your services. But in terms of does advertising also have its uses that inbound marketing cannot reach? Yes. Hey guys, welcome back to the Leadership Stack Podcast, the podcast for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs to increase your leadership, teamwork, and profits. This is your host, Sean C, aka Mr. CEO at 22. What are the differences between SEO and advertising? This episode is partnered up with Armory.ph. That is A-R-M-O-U-R-Y dot P-H. Armory is an online watch store and is the exclusive distributor of the brands TW Steel, Dion Milano, Fonderia, Luminox, and Mondain in the Philippines. Yes, folks, those are Italian watch brands. If you are looking to buy your next go-to luxurious everyday watch, Go to armory.ph and enter the coupon code LS30. That's all caps LS30, no space. Armory.ph delivers straight to your doorstep with a security tape to make sure that your package is safe from theft, arrives on time, and is guaranteed working 100%. Go to armory.ph and buy your first luxury watch today. Well, SEO is inbound. Advertising is outbound. What that means is SEO is there are people who are already searching and they come to you. So it's inbound because you're not looking for them. You're not distracting them. You're not getting into their faces. They're just coming to you because they're looking for whatever it is you have. And that's why Google ranked your website high in their search engine results page. So we call that inbound marketing. And that is, in my opinion, one of the best ways to market is to just serve people who are already looking to be served, sell to people who already want to buy. So inbound marketing is, in in my opinion, the best form of marketing. And the best platform to do that nowadays is through Google or search. With advertising, there is a place for advertising that Google cannot get into. And that is if you're selling something that's novel. So if it's completely new, the market is not familiar with it, they don't know what it is, then you do have to advertise. You have to tell them what the product is about. There is no way for them to search for that because it is something new in the market. So that is the time when I say advertising has to happen. And you can do Facebook ads, Instagram ads. Uh, It's really up to you, which is better than the other. Well, in terms of return on investment, inbound marketing has much better returns because they're already ready to buy. They're already ready to hire you for your services. But in terms of does advertising also have its uses that inbound marketing cannot reach yes because again if whatever it is you're selling has not been introduced in the market that well then no one's searching for that then you do have to advertise with the search of new online food sellers popping up left and right what do you suggest are the best ways for existing food sellers to stay relevant to consumers are there any best practice marketing strategies you can recommend if you were a food seller before the pandemic here's the thing people still want what they want it hasn't changed all that's changed now is the how. How are they going to get that? So if people, did people want ramen? Yes. Did people want milk tea? Yes. But how they're going to get it now has changed. They just can't go to the, the ramen shop anymore and eat like before. Or they just can't go to a certain milk tea brand before and just uh, dine in there as before or, or drink their milk tea there as before. There are certain differences and hassles and friction points. And all you have to do as a business person is identify those friction points and make sure that you address them. You make it super easy for people to get what they want from you. So if you're selling the food and you were selling okay pre-pandemic, you're going to be selling okay if you're able to figure out how you can get through the friction points. And I know that competition has increased because of the cloud kitchens and online food sellers that you mentioned are popping up left and right. Here's the thing. What are they doing that's so effective for them? If it's Instagram and Facebook, then that can work for you too. If it's because they have wonderful and amazing looking photos that make you hungry, then you have to invest in that. Videos, sure. Are they running ads? Then maybe you could try that too. So I know that this is these are some of the things that online food sellers are doing and they are making a lot of money from that. I suggest you explore that one maybe running Facebook and Instagram ads 
experimenting on the type of ads that you're going to run video image carousel whatever or remarketing that could be another area that you might want to check out or you might want to run an e-commerce site you can collect email addresses and phone numbers that could also be another strategy also in regard to online food businesses what do you suggest are the best targets to maximize a promoted post is using the automatic option not suggested yes so this is already a uh, digital marketing consulting i would not go with automatic i would mostly set the advanced options or i would mostly set the targeting to the people i think would buy more so with a food business in my opinion i think females would buy more so i would i would remove males from my target altogether just because i want to make sure that my budget spending is efficient like with the money i'm spending i want to sure that the people seeing my ads are really going to buy so in my opinion i think that's mostly women i may want men to see it but i don't think that it's going to be efficient if i spend uh, on men but if you choose automatic then it's going to spend on both male and female also you would want to target the geolocation that you're serving to so if you're serving only in metro manila area that's where you would want to target so just using the automatic options i don't think that that's a good thing you're just going to be burning a lot of money needlessly and sayang from just maybe on valentine's day yeah you can target men too yep yeah maybe you know using social media ads you have to Keep in mind the times, eh? the events, the times, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day. You have to run promos for those days. So that is how social media goes. And one reason why I love SEO is because you don't have to think about all of those times. People just go to your website because they searched in Google and found you and they're going to buy. If you ask me, SEO is the way to go. Do you need a website to be able to optimize SEO? Yes, you cannot optimize a Facebook page because a Facebook page, you cannot control the code. There is a code aspect to SEO. SEO is a three-pronged approach. There's copywriting and psychodynamics, and then there's technical, which has to do with code, and then there's marketing, which has to do with the links you build and your citations, etc. So you do need your own website. You cannot do SEO just with a Facebook page. You're going to get beat each time, every time. Is it worth it to pay the one-time setup, setup fee of 36K for Dragon Pay to be integrated on your website? Well, it depends on how much you're selling. If you're selling like 1 million a month, I think 36K is no problem, right? But if you're selling like 50K a month, then 36K is huge. I would go with something that's manual first because people know how to do bank transfer manually anyway. Or if you want it to be seamlessly integrated to your website para wala ka ng hassle, I'd go with something like PayPal first for credit cards. You know, try other payment options first. And then the bank transfer, usually people can just send you the deposit slip. Eh? Paying 36000 for people to trust. And by the way, Dragon Pay, I like I experienced a bug. I couldn't pay via PayPal through Dragon Pay. So I checked out using Dragon Pay and their PayPal option. It doesn't work. It hangs. And my entire cart, it just went out the window. So and you could say that's my experience. I I'm I have no opinion about Dragon Pay. I have used Dragon Pay a lot. And gumana naman sila for a lot of times uh, when I was paying or donating money. But it's just that yesterday, it didn't work for me. And my entire cart got whacked. And, and if they're charging 36K, I, I think, well, again, if you're selling 1 million a month, then that's okay. But if you're selling like 50,000, then that's not okay. So you have to decide if it's worth it or not. Hi, Sean. A friend asked me to organize their online post-grad seminar event thingy on Zoom with a little bit too much production value that then needed for a regular Zoom event. Are there op opportunities that you can see from this? And what's my next step if ever I want to turn this into a business or income on the side? I think that there is an opportunity. In fact, I think that there are people who are already doing webinars as a service or webinar events as a service, and they are making money from it. Although the longevity, I'm not sure, because once the, the virus is over, and we're going to go back to face-to-face. -face. I think a lot of people are going to go back to face-to-face. -to -face. So I'm not sure if you're going to be able to sustain, to sustain that business. But if you're just looking for something to make money with right now during the, the pandemic when we're at home mostly and where Zoom meetings is still the go-to place, then definitely, I definitely suggest that you explore that. I have no real experience or idea on, as to how much that would be. I just saw some pitches, but I didn't get to see the price or the features. More research has to be done, but I think that it could be an income on the side at least. Yes.
being a creative thinker really helped me come up with all my books and the creativity school. So that I really, that's why I'm such a advocate for creative thinking. All of these books are being are written on topics that I have, you know, experience with and things that I've learned from my own life.